right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. We continue with the conversation, We're talking about politics, femicide, and governance as well. We've captured a bit of politics, but we're finishing up on the issue of the counties and the wastage there as has been tagged by a report by the control of budget. And Yusuf was coming to you on this. Mm -hmm. Do you see the necessity of all this expenditure and how can it be reallocated, so to speak? Because these are actual expenditure lines, budget lines on the CIDP, County mm -hmm. Integrated Development Plans, and even the annual mm -hmm. development plan. So it's actually there on paper. Mm -hmm. But is it necessary? Uh, first of all, this is a shocking report. Um, but looking at figures way from 2013, year in, year out, um, the report is still the same. And, and the question is becoming, did we devolve corruption from national government to the lowest levels, or what did we do? Right? Uh, since um, devolution came into place, Kenya has spent uh, more than 3.2 trillion sending into counties. You would ask yourself, what has this money done 10 years or nine years after devolution? You realize that there is, of course, there hasn't progress, like AC is, is saying. Uh, you hear very good reports from Kirinyaga, Turukana, my home county, Kakamega. Um, you go to Siaya or, or even Kisumu. Governors are trying their level best, but we still have this public outrage on wastage. And um, it, it just brings us to, to, to what AC has mentioned. Where is the problem? And my feeling, there are two things. The president has been talking about the autonomy of county assemblies. The way county assemblies are structured right now, they get funding from the executive, which is the county governor. Now, such a kind of an arrangement, it doesn't place counties or county assemblies at the best place to, to audit that person who is funding them, right? So I agree with the president, county assemblies need to be autonomous, they need to run their independent budgets so that they can hold the governors to account. Number two, capacity building for 190. Sometimes I see adverts on public participation, like the other day I saw an advert um, uh, for public participation for Kakamega County. Now, if you look at it in detail, uh, from a point of view of, of, of even governance, those public participations are not giving results that we really require. Um, um, uh, uh, papers or even those financial bills or drafts, they are given the very day the Monainchi comes. You see, imagine a situation where you are coming to public participate, but you are interacting with that document the very first time. You have not had time to, to converse or even to interrogate those issues. So when you come, you are coming to say yes or no. Do you want a hospital, uh, for instance, in Makunga, where I come from? Uh, 50 people say yes. Uh, 79 say no, without interrogating the details that go into, into the, the having of the hospital or not. Um, the president has also talked about the Senate oversight. Um, and, uh, and I think, Senator AC, you sit uh, in the Senate. I have a feeling senators are not properly, uh, uh, properly supported uh, in terms of their oversight duties. There was a proposal that we allocate uh, five million per constituency. It is a proposal I support so that uh, senators walk around their counties. They interrogate projects, programs uh, being implemented at that level. Number three, like um, AC has mentioned, senators and governors must work together. We've had a cut dog relationship between senators and governors, not knowing that all these people are elected by, by the same people. Uh, for instance, in Kakamega, the people who elected Halwale and people who elected uh, Governor Baras are the same people. So these people are supposed to serve those people. But the two, for instance, right now, they are not working together. Right? So the senator, in one way or another, might not want to dwell on the real issues that affect the people. Probably they have ambitions and so to say. So we need to find a working balance between Senate and county government. Um, is devolution working in Kenya? The answer is yes. Devolution, um, I, I think we, we wasted a lot of time. This is, this is a system of government that we needed to introduce way, way, way early. But now the big question is, we must ask ourselves, these monies we are sending to counties, are we getting the results we want? We should not be talking about hunger right now in Turukana mm. or, or even in Waji or Garissa. So much money has gone into those areas. Um, another issue, um, Mwanainchi. What is the place of Mwanainchi in this whole debate? 
right? So we, have, we need to have deliberate programs, uh, capacity building. People have to be informed. And I am happy there are so many, uh, there are so many organizations um, at county, a county level. For instance, where I come from, I know of a young man called Nixon uh, who's running a center called Kakamega Community Center. In his own small capacity, he's holding to account that local government. If you are saying that you are budgeting 100 million for Bokungo Stadium, for instance, they want to know who's the contractor. Yeah. Was the bidding process fair, transparent, so to say? So it is a wake-up call. Yeah. Uh, monies that go to counties are taxes that we collect from citizens. Mm. So people must ask those questions. Okay. And governors must provide that, um, that opportunity and platform for, for Nainchi to, to air their views so that uh, what comes into CIDPs, what we see being uh, in the finance bills at the, county, uh, at the county level, they are a reflection of the people needs and wants at that point. Yeah, Masi, what are your views on this wastage at county levels? Uh, um, even uh, before I give my re remarks, I'd like to mention um, still on the young people who have the numbers and actually should be challenging these very leaders who they campaign for. Mm -hmm. um, we still have an issue in terms of representation mm -hmm. because uh, the August House, our constitution is uh, categorizes youth as those 18 to 35 years. Now, when as much as the KYPA may have uh, quite a big number because they consider um, uh, under 40, uh, so they have at least 40 members, but in actual sense, those who get elected to the House are less than 10. Mm -hmm. How can it be less than 10, yet uh, 18 to 35 is around 29% of the population? So, um, and when it comes to adult population, they are almost 40 to 50 percent. So why are we not seeing that translating in the representation in the House? So that is a very big issue, and I feel um, that is where we are disorganized. But in other areas, um, I think the youth inclusion has always been there. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and to devolution, um, as, uh, as Honorable S.C. mentioned, the issue of civic education, how will citizens hold to account when they do not even understand Absolutely. the 14 functions stipulated in the constitution? Are they able to tell that this is a road under national government, mm -hmm. this is a road by county government? Uh, these are functions, healthcare, agriculture, civic education itself, that these are uh, what you're supposed to expect uh, from the county. And uh, this is what you can expect from national government or CDF. So the distinguishment of, of function, you know, is that civic education there. Uh, and then also um, familiarity with public finance management. Mm. How many citizens are familiar with Chapter 12? Because I think we're always familiar with Chapter 6 mm. on conduct and all that. But really the interrogation mm. and accountability is with Chapter 12. And then um, we must ask ourselves, so what is the system? Yeah, what are the systems in terms of reven revenue collection? What are our fiscal poli policies in terms of supplementary budgets? To what extent um, is there even a minimum that is given uh, for, for development? Because recently, other than this report, another shocker was that a good number of counties up to now had zero uh, expenditure on development, still from uh, this same office. So, uh, and, and a good number of counties were mentioned um, even uh, uh, on this uh, station. So we have a lot of challenges in devolution. Is devolution, was devolution necessary? Definitely. Is it working? That is now where we have the debate. Uh, different counties have different strengths. Mm -hmm. There are different, different counties, different uh, sectors mm -hmm. can be benchmarked. There are those who have done well in agriculture, there are those who have done well maybe in manufacturing, there are those who who are doing uh, well in industrialization, that those who are doing well in terms of maybe f uh, food security and um, uh their educational programs. So there's a lot of cross-learning that is needed. There's a lot of uh, looking at our policies and how um, or maybe even strengthening or expanding the mandate of this controller of budget because when all this was happening, uh, is, it, is it that, uh, and, and this is also enjoined with auditing, are we able to have them in real time? Mm -hmm. Or this is something we will keep, be, keep discovering one year yeah, after. So is yeah. there any um, proactive mm -hmm. way to curb this issue? I think those are the discussions we're going to have. Otherwise, yeah. we will be speaking the same thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah, I'll, I'll just give you a chance because something. you're in the Senate, but also we need to shift and now talk about femicide. This, yes. uh, actually, senators, the elected senators will be getting oversight. I, they are organizing their offices. Now you'll mm -hmm. be seeing more of them on the ground. Mm -hmm. That's quite good progress we, we, are, we have made in this administration. 
And Trevor, let me just mention, I think it's time we stop celebrating the corrupt among us. We lost it the moment we stopped telling our own stories and we are there praising corru the corrupt guys among us. Because then if you don't do that, then people treat it as something which is very normal. Absolutely. You mentioned about young parliamentarians. The other time I was here, I said, uh, in fact, today the young parliamentarians are meeting in Machakos for this year's strategic plan, uh, uh, laying down their plans for the, uh, this. Uh, uh, we, you know we've been on recess. Yeah. We, are, we are resuming the next week. Trevor, there are things you can't lobby in parliament as a young person. Because first, you do not have the numbers. Mm -hmm. Convince people about your idea, not as a young person, convince people or other members of parliament how viable your idea is. Let your idea, don't present your idea to them because you are a young person. The moment you're there, all of you are members of parliament. Being a young person just happens because of, yes, age and whatever category that uh, finds you there. But when you're pushing your agenda, you're, you should be able to sell your agenda in a manner that other members of parliament can buy it. Mm -hmm. And uh, young legislators are doing quite a good job, and even the women. If you even look at the debates, uh, most of the statements, most of the, uh, most of the motions, most of the legislative proposals that have been brought to the House are by this category. Yeah. Uh, personally, I'm sponsoring the street vendors' bill, Absolutely. protection of livelihoods. Mm -hmm. You see how those guys are treated across major county towns. I have sponsored the county civic education bill because I believe ordinary people deserve to be informed so that when something is coming to them, it's not coming like a token. They deserve whatever they are receiving. Mm. So Trevor, we have a responsibility to actually put our heads together and not look at it as a one person's responsibility. Okay. Uh, because generally, you need political goodwill in every single thing you're trying to lobby, especially in these political circles. Okay. So if you come like, okay, I'm pushing this because I'm a woman, you're losing it. You're a woman, but we have very many women who've been elected mm -hmm. and by several men who saw capacity in them. They didn't elect them because they were women. So there has to be something beyond that special interest group where you exist, yeah. in that people are able to see you beyond just being AC. There should be something else other than AC being a young being person. A young person, okay. Let's bring yeah. you some of the feedback that is coming through, and then now we talk about the issues of femicide and find out what are we getting wrong. That mm -hmm. is the main conversation we're having here. What are we getting wrong when it comes to this issue of femicide, and how can we address it comprehensively? Ingenia Nazaro says youth shouldn't campaign with only one agenda of being young. No, yes. they should come out forcefully with intentions of changing our decades tribal-based political arena with an issue-based one. Okay. Lumbori says leadership in the digital age demands more than just expression. It requires embracing diverse perspectives. Okay, Nuri's strength lies in fostering openness welcoming critics instead of blocking them on Absolutely. social media. <laughs> you block <laughs> someone, okay, Yuri. You don't even <laughs> name them, but see, there's nothing like a young person, yeah. a woman, man, or be a person living yeah. with disability in leadership. Someone is either leader or not. Let people present their leadership qualities and they will get elected or appointed. The rest is street talk, okay? J.M. Musoma says, Gashagwa's shareholder remarks made UDA and Azimio supporters feel he is not suitable for the office he holds. <laughs> Just like the president, the DP is a symbol of national unity, but Rigiji limits himself to Mount Kenya. That's why the youth want Dindi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Peter Gesaru says, it's too early for Mount Kenya leaders to speak about who will be the deputy, who will deputize President William Ruto in 2027. Let the leaders offer services to Kenyans who elected them. Okay. Masti, let me start with you on this, on this issue of femicide now. Now we're shifting topics and talking about ending femicide. What are we getting wrong? A lot. Okay. Um, so I'll start with some statistics. Uh, there was some good uh, presentation by Africa Data Hub, whereby we looked uh, from 2016 to 2023, uh, over 500 um, infamous cases of femicide. And the data 
then uh, it reveals a, a, a kind of pattern. And now when we begin to look into data, and that's actually something um, I appreciate that was mentioned in the press statement by our presidential advisor, women's right, that we need data because you cannot make decisions without data. So as to be able to interrogate what is the root cause, what are, what are the patterns, you know, because this is... Is, 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 is not really sporadic, but it is something rampant. Um, like I mentioned to you, the first time that I even came on this set, it was actually because of the femicide issue some years back. So we have had, um, <coughs> uh, and, and, and femicide is actually the highest form of SGBV. So we need to ask ourselves, w w what is the root cause of SGBV? Because before se uh, femicide takes place, there are other, uh, it, it, that's the highest form of es escalation. So first and foremost, uh, from the data, we are seeing that 60% of these uh, victims were young women. Young women, absolutely. And then 80%, and, and this is something I have to stress because um, it's been unfortunate, some insensitive remarks. 80% of these victims were killed by close and known persons to them. This is a husband, mm -hmm. uh, a, a boyfriend, someone they are living with, um, it can be a relative friend. So I think, unfortunately, it took a wrong turn whereby we had people talk of, uh, uh, of, of, of and, and, and I support uh, personal safety measures and safeguarding. But really, are you going to safeguard yourself against your own spouse? Really, are we asking our, our wives and, 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 and people who are in intimate relationships to now sleep with, with, with guns and knives under their pillow? <laughs> you know, really, when you... Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, uh, something that I feel has been a deviation is when we blame victims that this is because of love of money by the women. But really, 80% of these victims... It was, it, was, it was not really a, 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 a transactional relationship or it was meeting with a stranger. So the issues of personal safety and money are actually <clears throat> smaller reasons. This intimate partner violence, by the time someone close to you, someone who should be respecting you, someone who should you know, take care of you, someone you should feel safe with, and actually part of these victims are minors. I mean, our children, uh, our girls, ought to be safe in their own homes because uh, uh, for, for, for children, other than death, even defilement is a very grievous uh, crime as per our uh, Sexual Violence uh, Act. So... Where are we getting it wrong? Um, it's, it's the normalization of SGBV. So 2014, we began with My Dress, My Choice, uh, you know, post the new constitution, because I think the issue of women's rights uh, is, has been something even before this century. Mm -hmm. You know, women's right to vote. You know, women's rights are diverse, political, economic, social. So now the right to life is the highest right, and that is what uh, femicide is, 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 is an abuse of. So... We, we had 2014 My Dress, My Choice, and this was about sexual harassment and, and, and stripping of women in public transport. So this is public transport. This is an open space. Mm -hmm. And now it has escalated. 2019, we had femicide, and, and, and that was the, the first time we had shut down a KE hashtag, and it's now again uh, uh, come up again in 2024. So 2014, we had sexual harassment. 2019, 2024 we are dealing with femicide. So that's why I'm saying we must in interrogate the, the psychology, our, cult uh, our culturalization, uh, you know, and there's something uh, that, uh, that is mentioned a lot, that we need to deal with misogyny. Misogyny is simply contempt, contempt to, to, to women's rights. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and some, uh, sorry to say, uh, and I agree with, uh, still with the statement during the presidential uh, advisor's uh, women's rights uh, presser that, you know, even, even media has its role to play. We cannot be calling these crimes acts of passion because when you call it an act of passion, it's in insinuating that this was something sporadic. By the time someone is killing you, and as I've said, the data is showing this is 80%, someone you're living with, Absolutely. it starts with a threat. Mm -hmm. One day, uh, you know, one day in Takuchinja, mm -hmm. one day, you know, or someone is actually beaten, is hospitalized. A good number of victims of cases that have been highlighted. Someone was abused, went to hospital, recovered, came back to that same home, and then at the last point, they initially die in the hands of someone who abused them several times. So we, we cannot um, 
call these things acts of passion, acts because of uh, issues of money, no. Because a lot of this femicide, if it's an intimate partner violence, I want to believe this is something premeditated. Okay, this is someone you have stayed with. You could have walked away, but now you decided to stay there, yeah. and, 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 and now things have, uh, uh, have been blown okay. out of proportion we'll, where we'll you're killing that, them. We'll talk about that walking away, you, that you had the option of walking away in just a bit, <laughs> because that's a very tricky perspective of this entire conversation. There are many who say that their economic realities that come with that. There are also the cultural practices that come with that. When you're in a homestead setup, then there's also the ripple effect. Some of them have children there. Absolutely. So when we just make a statement that they had the option of walking away, it might not be as straightforward as that. No, no, no. I was using the, that that <clears throat> the perpetrator did not walk away from this person to show that this is not these murders are not sporadic. They're not just acts of passion. There is possibility yeah. of premeditation because this is someone you have stayed with for long. You know, as a perpetrator, not the victim. I'm saying as a perpetrator, you you should know your temperament yeah. and be able to tell here I'm going to commit a crime. So I need to because we cannot put the burden on victims. Okay. The, the blame must be on perpetrators. Okay. And you, you've asked a critical question, what's the issue? You said some may not work away because of economics, and that's what I'm saying. We must look at women's rights holistically. And I actually um, uh, checked what are the key issues that we've been facing when it comes to violence against women's, okay. uh, women and girls. And this was a post-COVID-19 report. And the number one most prevalent was psychological. Mm -hmm. And I was glad to see that data come out because femicide is the, is, 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 is the worst form of this violence. And we need to begin to, to look at the unseen. Mm -hmm. You know, when we begin to tackle the unseen and the common, violence against women and girls. And I'll give you the, the, how they were, uh, their chronological order. So number one was psychological. Mm. This is many times unreported. Mm. The second one now was physical assault. Physical assault, you're still alive. Then now came defilement, then uh, child abandonment, then um, FGM, which also some died there. And uh, then now economic, and then uh, issues of uh, uh, rape, sodomy. So there was that. Um, so there's a lot of unreported and unseen and unrecognized. Yeah. Okay. So we, we have a bigger issue. If femicide is alarming us, yeah. we have a lot of physical assault, we have a lot of psychological violence against women's, women and girls that is ongoing, and we need to condemn it yeah. and take it seriously like terrorism. Okay. Let me bring in Yusuf on this. Yusuf, what are we getting wrong Just in, your, in your assessment? Uh, first of all, I want to join many Kenyans and actually many women and leaders who've expressed their deepest condolences to the families of Stale Tuahu and Rita Waeni. Um, specifically, the story of Rita Waeni is extremely disheartening. Um, yesterday, I was watching a report by the chief government pathologist, uh, and uh, the ordeal Waeni went through before she met her death. It, it surprises you that uh, are we are, are humans turning into animals or what exactly is happening, you know. Um, I agree with um, Harit Chigai, women rights are human rights and no murder is justifiable. Whatever the case, whatever the reason, you have no reason to take a life uh, either because um, you were in a transactional relationship then someone said to know uh, no to, to your decisions or your actions. We all have rights, so to say. So uh, I want to condemn this in the strongest terms possible. As a party, um, we do not support this. The other avenues or mediums on which to solve conflicts. Um, so we, we, we do not, generally I lack words to say this. It, it, is, it is disheartening. But this is not the first case. All of us remember the, the story of um, the Moi University student, Wangeshi, um, Wangeshi and um, that gentleman, is the most Kinudia, yes. That story actually really shook this nation to the core. And uh, actually, it was a point where we needed to open our eyes to this whole issue of femicide. She has mentioned very important data. Um, I was reading a report yesterday, actually, from the African Uncensored, and they are saying that many young people who are, it is, it is young people actually who are the major victims of, of femicide, 18 years to 35, and most surprisingly, these acts are happening at a place you feel most comfortable, your home. Um, the report further says that um, uh, these people, you've been intimate with them, 
or most probably you are, they are your ex-lover. So these are people you know. These are people you've interacted with on and off, and so to say. So um, as a nation, we need to, we need, this issue needs more energy, needs more focus. Um, I will not shy to say that uh, I'm a gender activist or, or I'm a defender of women's rights. I support women in all totality, uh, their rights both, both, both in the political space or these other spaces. But what do we need to do as a country? And I think um, she has said it very well. And um, there is an alarming data that um, gender-related cases take more than 1,900 days to be conversed uh, and to be executed. Um, there, was, there was this whole debate about having gender-sensitive desks at every police station uh, in Kenya. I don't know how far that has happened. You realize that, um, uh, for instance, you might suffer rape even in your home. You go to a police station to report that issue, and the first person you are meeting is a male police officer. That, that does not put you in a comfortable position even to transact that issue. So um, gender sensitive deaths, especially at the police level, those ones need to be implemented. We need to have officers at every police station that have been trained effectively on, on gender violence related matters. Then um, um, there is also another issue of uh, lack of witness availability. And like you've, you've mentioned clearly, some of these issues are heavily indebted into our culture. For instance, you, you'd, you, you'd, you'd meet a defilement case where an uncle defiles um, uh, or, or, or a brother defiles a brother's child. You know, if such a kind of a case is taken to court, now it shames even the family. So these people resort to kangaroo courts and so on. Uh, this actually takes, takes, takes the credibility and it doesn't, it doesn't strengthen yeah. the need of people going forward and, and transacting these cases in court. So um, there is also another issue of mental health. Yeah. It is a big issue, um, especially among young people. Young people are struggling with, with, um, with a lot, be it economy, uh, jobs, so to say. So we need to have community awareness on how to solve conflicts. Yeah. As a young man, if I was talking to AC and AC rejected my, my advances <laughs> yeah. for that matter, is, is, is a recourse taking her life? Mm. That is not the answer. There are so many women. Uh, K Kenya has so many young, beautiful women. Young men must be confident enough uh, to realize that if I, I didn't manage to catch this fish. Move to the next. Uh, yeah, move to the next. And there are many waiting uh, out here. So um, finally, um, effectiveness in law enforcement. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling that we need to do more, like I've said. Uh, we need to train officers uh, who, who have knowledge, yeah. understanding uh, of, of, of GBV cases. And for example, let me mention, um, the case again for rape. Uh, you see, there is the whole, the whole issue of evidence. Our judicial system is, is based on the law of evidence. Without evidence, um, you cannot prosecute your case. So if I'm walking into a police station, or I've taken my child to a police station and my child has been defiled. How did I handle that evidence? Was it collected uh, properly? Was it documented uh, effectively? So that at the, that point we are, we, we, are, we are approaching the case, we have a watertight case to do what? Maybe. To prosecute that person. Okay. Uh, by and large, it is an issue of national concern. Yeah. Uh, it will take efforts by all of us and I want to appeal to men. Uh, there was, uh, at a point, uh, Kenya was running a, a campaign of he for she. Yeah. Men have to be protectors of women. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you, would, you, you, you cannot say that uh, probably Waini, I'm not related to Waini in, in one way or another. Next day, it will be your grandmother, it will be your mother, your sister, or bad off, it will be even your wife or your girlfriend. So I want to rally men across the republic. Yeah. This is not just a women issue. It is a national issue that needs support from all of us. Essie, mm. what do we do? Mm. How do we fix For this? For me, mm. I think this whole discussion about femicide and the violence that is leading to death we are seeing actually draws us to reflecting on we, how we as a society handle problems. Absolutely. Mm. You see, the other time we had the Shakaola issue, mm. yeah. All, all of us were asking ourselves what was the society doing for all those years that they never raised alarm on anything that was happening. 
this is the same issue we are seeing here. Uh, how we as a society respond to the problems we are dealing with on a daily basis mm -hmm. is of key uh, uh, essence on this discussion. I will not blame those who are engaging on the gender gender side because uh, you know th th that's how they've taken uh, the, they've taken the whole issue. But for me, I think this also is an opportunity, especially for the legislators. This is an opportunity to look into coming up with laws. Now, like on the issue of uh, these private residential areas and lodgings, Airbnbs. Mm, Airbnbs, yes. If you look across the, the world, different countries are handling it differently. Why would we allow uh, people to thrive without regulations? I think this is, this is another chance for we to have regulations. If a crime has happened in your area and it was publicly listed, that person, uh, uh, action should be taken. Mm -hmm or certain kind of modalities. Because what we are seeing now, Trevor, people find it easy to go to Airbnb because no one is asking you of, of any personal details. And at the expense of maybe well-doing hospitality industry hotels, you see? Uh, the, the other issue here, if you look at the conversations on social media that are happening, the media itself mm -hmm. makes this a sensation like now, personally, I stopped watching the story about Waini because I felt maybe it's time we just uh, let her rest in peace. Because I feel that now, even look at how Pastor Kanyari's sister's case was handled. Mm -hmm. People on social media were, okay, okay, these people want easy money. She's died. How come the, fa the brother is a pastor? What are you telling us? You know, they make it so difficult even for the victims to seek for justice. Absolutely. Because you feel, you know, now it brings a moral aspect here. And we live in a society, a conservative society, which has so many expectations on you. So people would not want to be highlighted in such manner. So families sometimes opt to let it slide, but we need more people to make noise on these matters so that perpetrators are actually brought to book I'm talking about uh, making a sensation out of this thing. Because on social media right now, if you read, people are like, okay, I equally issued a statement to condemn whatever that is happening. Because we want safe spaces for women as we want for men. But people are like, okay, talk to your girls. Their thirst for money is on another level. It's not just, life is not just about money. I, I saw a case of a young lady in Machakos University from South Mogrango constituency mm -hmm. who was actually killed by the, the boyfriend. The parents have no fear to even go view the body in Machakos. Would you want to say, you know, whatever circumstances, damage has already been uh, caused, a loss has happened. At that point, I don't think much of our emphasis especially from the public, should be on why this person was actually killed. They have been killed. Now we are dealing with the issue of bringing whoever is taking life away from them. So, Trevor, I think on the issue of regulations, we need to look at that because we have so many of those Airbnbs. I'm not saying shutting them down because they are also uh, contributing greatly to our economy. But there needs to be a structured manner of either those private residential areas being publicly listed and the moment you, uh, something happens in your area, you are able to take responsibility or charge or something. But as it is now, you can't take someone to account because they're like, okay, someone came and paid. For them, money is key, you know. There has to be a balance between uh, what we as a society are what we want and how we respond to some of these issues. Because as we go on, Trevor, we are, we are, we are going to witness more and more issues of intolerance. Do you, you see any moral or financial reasons? Look at even the guys. guy, the model student who was killed in uh, Eldoret, who, whose body was stuffed in a metal box. <laughs> yes. You see, we, those are conversations which are happening in as much as people want to run away from them. Yeah, 
And speaking of running away, is what I'm asking you, that do you mm -hmm. see any moral or financial relation to what is going on now? Because you've mentioned I, that I online would, people are talking I wouldn't about think people asking you to tell your girls not to love the money. Let me tell you, it's, it's the wrong it's, perspective. It's but not all about, let me relation. finish. It's not all about money. Yeah. Because there are people who have money and they're being killed. Yeah. What's, you know, it's, it's not all about money. There are people who have money and they're still being killed either because someone, your partner just got angry mm -hmm. and at the <clears throat> part of the moment they decide to just chop you off. You see? That's not about money. But on the issue of money, Trevor, we can't close our, uh, our eyes to the realities uh, existing in society. You know, chances are someone who's desperate is likely to fall for such offers. You can't blame them for not being in a position uh, to have means. Because I, I see everyone wants to have a good life, Trevor. Mm -hmm. You, you, you're not going to say, okay, now I have nothing. So people are trying to make ends meet or maybe also look like their peers. This calls for parents, uh, friends, and the government to have a more robust conversation on how to make people feel first content with who they are. Because if you do not accept yourself as an individual, you know, it's the case of parents and villagers sending away teachers for students failing examinations. It's not a one-way responsibility. <laughs> so this actually shows how morally, as a society, yeah. things look like, and how we respond to the challenges that are facing us. We can't throw it to one side that, okay, girls are obsessed with money. Yeah. Sometimes you're killed not because of the money, the, the money you are going for. Okay. Now look at the, the now l let me ask you, Trevor, the case of the girl in Machakos. That was a student. Was she killed because of money? First, the parents don't even have fear to go view the body. Yeah. Will you say that her, her affinity for money is what has led to her death? Whereas as a community back home, the parents took someone to school to come and change their economic situation back home. Yeah. So this is not a time to throw, uh, to throw responsibility and say, okay, you failed on this, but this has to be joint. Yeah. Just like I, I mentioned some time back on Shakahola. When people come up 10 years later yeah. to say, I actually have a missing brother, for all those years, where oh, have I we mean, been? Okay. Uh, let me bring in Massey in this. Massey, do you see that relationship and how do we get out of it? Because there's a, there are many things to this and it's a very tricky ground where there are some people who are saying we are not being realistic enough and telling the truth that we are being but there are also those who are saying the ukwili itself is relative. It's not a standard for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I look at the issue uh, politically, socioeconomically and sociopolitically. So first and foremost, for those who want to discuss thirst of money, I've given the statistics, 80% is intimate partner mm -hmm. violence. These were people that they were probably living together or have uh, relative kind of ties or maybe uh, uh, co-parenting a child together or something. So thirst of money cannot really be a, 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 a reason to give, to justify or, or blame. And I'm wondering if you have two people to choose to, choose to blame, the victim and the perpetrator, why are you not uh, blaming the perpetrator? Because if the perpetrator stops perpetrating, this issue shall end. Victims don't choose to be victims. You know, nobody wishes to die by femicide. And if it's thirst of money, this other person, this perpetrator, there was a thirst they were having, no wonder they met. So let's get off our, our, our moral high horse of morality and hypocrisy because this, this, it takes two to tango. Let's leave it at that. And we must, uh, we must hold perpetrators to account and we must uh, empathize with victims because majority of victims actually do not even report. These are simply just femicide statistics. We have not yet tackled sexual gender-based violence, violence against women's and girls' statistics holistically. They will be shocking. In fact, uh, the UN Women states that the global average for SGBV is at 30%. Kenya, uh, and, and, and I think we even had um, an, an, a, a dis uh, there was that discussion post-COVID. Is this SGBV, should it be declared pandemic or endemic? Because for Kenya, the prevalence was at at least 40%, 10% higher than the global average. And this is from reported data. And myself as having uh, engaged a lot on women's rights issues, sexual
sexual reproductive health among young people and even uh, as a peer counselor to fellow young women who again are the most victims a good number don't report so we have so much uh, that that we need yeah, to look give into give a give a minute i'll come to you yes. and then uh, on on what uh, has been mentioned about shakahola so we also now need to look at our security agencies shakahola was there was actually an alarm and it's interesting that the current cs gender was then an MP when an alarm was raised, but the alarm at that time was children absentia in school. They were, they, or is it that they were uh, uh, fasting a lot, so they were malnutrition? So there was an alarm. If this person was arrested, maybe these 2023 20, murders would not have happened. Okay. So we need to ask ourselves, what are we doing in terms of of our security agencies and there have been recommendations so i'm seeing in nairobi county the uh, uh, nairobi county gaf has supported um, the launch of sgbv units in police stations a good number of police stations the woman rep has been able to launch that and uh, i don't know if that's happening in other counties but then in the last quarter of 2023 uh, civic members raised that there's need of having a sex crimes unit to deal with uh, matters sgbv holistically holistically and then we ensure we have real-time data so that we're able to have a real understanding of the kind of issue we are having. Moving on um, to safe spaces politically, uh, because also what deters women participation in politics is, again, safety and security. We've had female leaders where it's the bodyguards that died. It could mm -hmm. easily have been that candidate. And also we saw very recently Her Excellency Kawira Mwangaza, the degradatory remarks, you know, that were spoken. And this is a political issue that was then turned into personal and, you know, very horrendous and mis misogynistic uh, comments against her. So safe spaces and I'll share some more data. So FIDA, the 2022 report for SGBV during the election time for women candidates uh, and women generally are citizens, 60% of the violence was online. Mm -hmm. Than even the physical assault and any other kind, 60% was online. So we have a lot of unseen things and we need to, our, our, our Technology, I feel, is a tool. The issue is the people, whether it's the online dating, the Airbnbs and whatnot. Technology is simply a tool. Whether it will be good or bad is based on the kind of people using those platforms. Mm -hmm. So the digital space is revealing to us a very serious matter that we must interrogate about the moral fabric of our society, yeah. the conscience of our people, because I'm wondering, and that's how I was saying, femicide should not be dubbed ever again acts of passion. It must be called acts of horror or acts of terror to women in Kenya because the number of deaths, yeah. you know, uh, these are over 150 deaths in a year and that's uh, the same thing that has also happened uh, terrorism the last years. So we must take it seriously. I don't think anyone, if they gave a comment online that I feel like suicide bombing a school, suicide bombing mm -hmm. uh, a, a government building, it would be taken lightly. But we can afford to take lightly and afford to see memes and all manner of funny comments online on the issue of femicide. And I feel that is revealing the kind of culturalization, normalize, normalizing of SGBV yeah. and, and, and indifference to women's rights. Because oh. Trevor, again, when you said about some are unable to get away from this uh, safe uh, they, they are able, unable to get themselves out of predisposed danger yeah. because of economic reason. Again, women's rights is holistic. It's about economic participation, their chance for political participation, their chance even for even their social rights. And even these things that we're asking for in terms of SGBV units, sex crimes units, yeah. and where the gap is, the legal implementation and quick conclusion of cases, we must resource our, our, our security agencies so that they are able to conclude investigations on time, whatever forensic and other things that need to be concluded, and the prosecution at the end okay. is fast-tracked. Okay. Yes, I needed, wind up on yes, this yes, I needed to notify my co-panelists that the police stations have gender desks yes. with well-trained officers they already. Operate so well is a problem. That uh, on on implementation, that's an, an, another issue altogether, yeah. mm. and it still comes back to Trevor the society because you see, after the media has reported, we are going to grieve. The families are going to grieve. The matter will be sensational to some blogs, and people will forget and move on. Mm -hmm. You see, these stories last for like two weeks and it dies, people move on and life goes on. So I think we shouldn't remain silent because the more we continue remaining silent, yeah. we are 
continuing to contribute to the inequalities we are seeing. And Trevor, if we actually talk about money, remember, it's not just women who are being killed, even men are being killed. Only that maybe the statistics that are being reported, uh, you know, are not the same to the women who are being killed. So do you want to say the men who are being killed also wanted money or something? You see, it's, it's sometimes the killings in those relationships, it's beyond. Sometimes they are very small things. Someone just got angry and they are not able to control their anger. Yeah. The next time someone is down. So I still insist we as a society have a moral obligation mm -hmm. to actually get better ways of dealing with the problems that are going to be arising. Because in as much as we will always say, okay, the government has to do this, but most of these issues you see rotate around members of the community, the society we are in, there are people known to us, uh, or whether they are not people known to us, at least they are human beings. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, and on the issue of the legislative uh, issues that should be coming up, yeah. this is a very good opportunity because I said in as much as these private residential areas are bringing income, mm. there needs to be a way because that is, regulation. right now if you walk there, you don't even leave your details, you just pay money and you, you know, that is it. Okay. And like in hotels, well, maybe you have to leave your details. Yeah. Nini, nini, and there you are, okay. Trevor. Let me see if I can raise some, some feedback really quick here as we wind up on this conversation. I'll come to each of you for one minute closing mm -hmm. remarks. You may pick whichever subject you want to close with, but let's see what you're saying online here, Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag daybreak. Charlo Woodrow, he says, ladies should just stop eating more than what they can chew. And <laughs> let them stop chewing. <laughs> but let them do what? <laughs> but let, let them not stop chewing. Yeah, let the perpetrators stop chewing. things can only come from your father, husband, or brother. Okay? And okay, Lomwalimu says, those who feel femicides shouldn't be handled with kid gloves. These animals must get severest of punishments. Courts should be the stumbling block in the dispensation of justice. They shouldn't be the stumbling block in the dispensation of justice to the affected families. To curb this heinous act, girl child should be more educated. Okay. Charlo says again, I blame the government on the killings of women in the country. Women are ready to do anything in order to get money with the intention of living a good life. Men are also stressed in meeting the bills, therefore doing rituals with human blood. Interesting allegations. Brand Chemua says we need to foster a culture of gender equality through education and awareness programs, which is essential to challenge harmful stereotypes and promote respectful relationships. Okay. Godi Baraza says they need to have the best things in life. Shere has proliferated <laughs> the highest number of femicides in the country. It's time our young ladies the took has been caution. Honest. Okay. Uh, Yusuf, yes. closing remarks. One minute. Um, two things. Um, one, actually, regarding politics, uh, I want to ask young people to join political parties. Okay. Uh, your participation, clapping for politicians, singing polit for politicians, writing blogs, good comments on Facebook and Twitter is not support or is not political participation. The only way, place or uh, an opportunity or platform you can participate effectively, like it has been mentioned before, is joining a political party. Okay. There is UDA, the other political parties, of course, but join a political party. That is where your voice is going to be made. Okay. Uh, on um, femicide, um, it is a concern, like it has been mentioned. But most importantly, I want to urge young men, both men and, 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 and females, look after yourself. Safety starts with you. Uh, they will, th there must be deliberate efforts uh, to support young men in this, in this community because from the look of things, we are raising young men who cannot face issues, young men who cannot solve problems, young men who cannot fend for, some, uh, for themselves. So the debate has to shift or it has to be balanced now as you empower the girl child, also empower the, the other gender. Yeah. Yes. Okay, Marcy, mm. closing remark. Uh, for me, I'd like to say that um, for def uh, in terms of politics, uh, special interest groups, youth, women, PWDs, let's uh, register as members of political parties where possible, as these political parties are the uh, greatest mm -hmm. influence in terms of the, leadership, uh, the leaders that will enter uh, positions. And then also, when it comes to this femicide issue, let us stop victim blaming, let us hold perpetrators to account, okay. let's call them out. And this money issue, let's 
let's let's not sensationalize it yet we know women are industrious Absolutely. we have seen banks do women programs and commit billions to financing women because women are doing business and trying to earn their living and even a very recent survey showed that women the majority a good number take loans towards household um, expenses yet 80 percent of this femicide is intimate partner violence so let's stop uh, victim shaming let's stop insensitive remarks let's get acquainted with the data let's be sensitive online and call out all forms of misogyny and disrespect to all kinds of women's rights, be it economic, political, and social. Zero tolerance to SGBV. All right. Yes. Uh, for me, I would say, Trevor, Kenya belongs to all of us. Young people should actually lead from the front mm -hmm. by stopping to celebrate the corrupt amongst them. Because those are guys who denied them the opportunities that they would be taking up uh, as we speak. And on the issue of femicide, I, I still say it trickles down to the society. Mm -hmm. We need to change the way in which we react to the problems around us because our silence on those issues actually perpetuates inequality and now the results can actually be widely seen. You see even from the comments you've read, no one is tolerant to accommodate the female gender. They are like, it's all about money. Mm -hmm. And you see now, the moment the public has written it that way, what remains with the family, they are, they are, they, the chances of them seeking justice are unlikely, mm -hmm. not unless the public puts enough pressure. And that's what affects most of these cases. Yeah. So Trevor, for young people, let them always come out and fight for what belongs to them. Opportunities will not come uh, at the comfort of your sofa. You have to come up and do something, at least show willingness to commit to a certain cause. Okay. And the right, uh, the right opportunities will come your way. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for making time this morning. Honorable S.C. Okinuri, nominated Senator Masi Mutana, Youth Advocate and Yusuf Fomenta, Head of Digital Communications at the UDA. Thank you so much for that conversation with us. Every Friday we give young people a chance to air their views on various issues. Today we're talking about politics, governance and femicide. To next week it will be something else. If you're a young person out there, our platform is always open. I get quite a number of people asking me that all the time. It is a platform for the young people every Friday, all right? So just get in touch. It will definitely give you a chance to air your views. All right, that leaves it. We'll, let's leave it there for now. Thank God it's Friday. Coming up is Ben Su, DJ Gigi on the decks. It's time for some gospel. It's that time to dance. My name is Trevor Ombija. Bye for now. Have a great weekend ahead. My director, Winnie Murioki Wangeshi, is asking me if I know how to dance. Negative. Bye for now.